All right, guys, it's Christmas time, and this has been on my wish list for a long time. And finally, Westcott and Lindsay Adler has made this possible. This is the optical spot, and unlike other light modifiers that I have, this allows you to put sharp highlights and shadows anywhere on your subject or background. This thing, I'm really, really, really excited to test out. I like this. This video is sponsored by the photo editing software Neo by Skylum. Right now, Neo is only available as an early access version that can be downloaded for people who want to pre-order it and are willing to give their feedback to the final release coming in February 2022. That being said, the F-Stoppers team has been using this for a few days now, and if you want a photo editing suite that uses artificial intelligence and machine learning, to help you speed up your photo editing process, this might be the perfect software for you. Now, there are many new features found in Neo that weren't in previous Luminar products, but the biggest one is going to be the addition of layers and layer masking. Some of the other new features already announced are auto dust removal, photo relight, which uses 3D pixel mapping to light your scene from front to back, and auto power line removal. There's also gonna be portrait background removal and mask AI, which will make changing your background much easier as well. If you wanna get your own copy of the early access version, or you simply wanna get a pre-order of the full version that's released in February, head to the link in the description below. So when you first look at this optical spot, it looks pretty intimidating. I mean, this thing looks like, almost looks like a silencer for a gun. So I have already unboxed this. I have it sitting right here, look at that. And what's interesting about this is you can put any speed ring on the back of this, which means you can just buy this one unit, it's not proprietary, and you can fit it to the lighting gear you already own. Or if you're like us and you have a bunch of different manufacturer strobes in your studio, you can change this in and out quickly and easily. Basically, you just unthread this back plate and then you can put whatever speed ring you want on the back. And what makes this light modifier, unlike anything else that we've ever used in our studio, is you can mount a lens on the front of it and then you can focus or diffuse the light coming out of this in a very precise way or make it really soft and airy and kind of abstract. It's all done with this optical lens. And what's awesome about this is if you shoot Canon, you can take this lens off and mount different Canon lenses. And with a wide angle lens, you can spread the light evenly over your background. Or if you use this lens that comes in the kit, you can make it really defined and put it really precisely over a model's face. Or maybe if you're shooting a product shot, you could just highlight the logo. It's really cool and it's unlike really anything else in the light modifying world. So what makes this light modifier so interesting? Well, first off, it uses a lens that you can focus and get really sharp edges. If you've ever tried to get a sharp edge and maybe you've built something like this where you're trying to shoot a little sliver of light through a piece of foam core, or hey, I'll make a circle and shoot a nice sharp circle on your background or on your subject. I think there's a photo right here. Um, you just know from experience it doesn't work. And the reason it doesn't work is once the light hits one of these cookies, as we'll call them, it starts to really lose its sharp edge as it travels to your subject or your background. So how you combat that is you put a lens in front of your cookie, and then you're able to focus your projection at your model or at your background, and you can soften it or sharpen it as you please. Now let me go ahead and take this lens off and show you how this basically works. This light modifier is going to project a relatively hard light to begin with, but they have these little leafs here, and you can basically push these in and out. And I don't know if you can see this here on the frame, but you can create different shapes. You can create little slivers of light. If I get this really narrow, I could also make uh, triangles or different shapes like rhombuses and any, really anything you can imagine with four sides. And this is going to allow you to create those really nice images where slivers of light are coming across your subject or if you wanna have just kind of a cool edge on the background, you can do that with this as well. So when you're first starting off using this light modifier, these leaves are gonna give you a lot of flexibility. They're really quick and easy. They're built into the light modifier, so you're not having to search for anything. But if you wanna get even more creative with this, you can add gobos in between the light and the lens. And Westcott makes these nice little expansion packs. One of them here is 10 environmental gobos. This looks like uh, shades from, say, your window. Also has more organic patterns like leafs and spackledy light as if you were shooting in the late afternoon sunlight. You have some trees, you also have some window panes. This is gonna be really useful. But they also have this pattern gobo set. And with this one, you can project all of these really interesting graphic patterns on your subject and background. Now the way that these work is you have this little cookie here in this little holder, and you basically just slide these different gobos right here in the back 
And unlike trying to do this with just a bare bulb speed light or strobe, your gobo can be really small because it's gonna fit behind the lens. If you've watched our channel, you've seen us try to create really big palm leaf impressions on our backdrop, and in that case, you need a palm leaf, and then you have to you know, shoot the light through that, and it can be kind of cumbersome. But with using this little cookie, you can place your gobo in here. This is about two inches. It slides right here in place, and then you can easily project this pattern on anything in your frame, nice and precise. And then of course, you can also use these leaf shutters to further reduce or expose the pattern of the gobo. So that's really handy. So if you wanna do like a leaf pattern, but you just want it really small, you could use the leaves and kind of get it on their face and then you could have the background with a completely different pattern. Now, the other feature that this light has that's pretty ingenious is many times you wanna change the color of this light and adding you know, gels to your light can be really tricky, especially if you're using huge soft boxes, you need massive gels, or you need to find a way to mount the gel on the inside of the soft box so that the smallest part of it is gelled. Well, Westcott creates this gel pack, and these little gels come with a little adapter that just fits right on the front of the lens, and this allows you to gel just the front of it. It also keeps your gel really far away from the light source itself. As you'll see in the shooting session, one thing I've found is if you're using hot lights, this thing does get incredibly hot. I mean, it's so hot that you do not want to touch it. In fact, I think the Westcott logo here is already kind of melting off of this, but that's because our lights have modeling lamps that are made with incandescent lights and those get extremely hot. Most of the more current lights have an LED light, but either way, because your gels and your lens are so far from the light source, you're not really worried about anything melting by putting it this far away. If you put the gels closer, you probably would have a problem, but um, you'll see more of that as we shoot in the lesson here in a bit. So now that I've explained how this works, let's check this out in a real world application and do a shoot with a model and see how you can create some really interesting looking images that are just simply not possible with normal light modifiers. So here we are in the studio. We got the lovely Christy Trainer here. She's looking awesome. And we're gonna try to go for a really edgy look that's got some colored gels, but also gives you that cool highlight across the face using the optical spot. So let me walk you through this step-by-step step so you can see exactly what the lighting is. It's relatively simple. I do have a blue backdrop here. I don't know if you can tell it's blue because we have some crazy blue lights in here, but that's gonna go ahead and give our background a really nice color without having to gel it. And then here in the back, I have a Profoto D1 and I've put a purple gel on it. Now it's got a reflector dish, so it's gonna be kind of hard light hitting her from the back. Let me go ahead and take a sample shot so you can see what that looks like. So as you can see from this photo, this is really dramatic. The lighting's not great, but it's just kind of adding a highlight on her side. In order to make this look a little bit more professional, I'm going to add some fill light from the front. And to do that, I've set up an Octabox. Uh, this is a seven foot Profoto softbox. And because it's so large, we're gonna be able to add really soft light that doesn't look too much like flash. It just kind of fills in the shadows, gives it a different color. I've also gelled this with an aqua gel, so it's gonna produce a nice blue tint on the front. Let's take a shot with this turned on now. And as you can see here, our purple light is subdued a little bit more. It's just kind of edging her out, but we pretty much now have a blue wash over the entire image. And it's also allowing our backdrop to register in the correct color that it is. So now we have the two lights giving our base image. It's time to add that nice sliver of light across her face. And the easiest way to accomplish that, we're gonna use this optical snoot now, I've just got this light in the perfect position, and I do have to say, working with Christy for a little bit, it does help having an assistant who can just manage this light because you'll get it in one perfect position, and then if she changes a little bit, you have to change the light, or maybe you wanna change the light vertically instead of horizontal. It does require an extra set of hands, but now that we have the light perfectly placed, let's take the final shot. And as you can see, this is a really cool effect, and of course, I'm gonna to wanna to shoot through a whole series of images while we adjust this. Some of them we're gonna get some slivers going across diagonally, maybe straight up and down. I've started off using no gel and I felt like the light was just a little too clean. I've actually wound up shooting with this pink gel and I think it plays along the theme that we're doing with all the gels in the room. So let's go ahead and take a bunch of images and hopefully we'll wind up with what? One, that's all we need. All right, for this next shot, we've done an outfit change, and I think I wanna use these cookies that you can place in between your light source and the lens, and they allow you to project different shapes on the background. 
or in this case, I think I'm gonna do something directly on Christy herself. So the one I'm gonna go with has all these nice like stripes in it, and I think we can get this really cool kind of spiderweb bondage sort of feel on her face. And if we just put one light on the background, which I'll show you here in a minute, we can keep her in dark shadow, and then with the optical spot, we can light selectively only the parts of her face and body that we want. So I've just taken one of my Profoto lights, I've put a reflector dish on it, it's just creating kind of a hot spot in the back of this paper. Let's go ahead and do a test shot and you can see what that looks like. One thing that's pretty ingenious about this setup is that they allow you to change out the lenses. I've gone ahead and put the 24 to 70 on. These mount all different Canon lenses and this allows me just to get a little bit wider of an effect. I feel like in some of these shots that you see, there's just too many stripes across her face. It's kind of cool, but maybe it would look a little bit more interesting and cleaner if we just space out these stripes a little bit more. All right, so we are done with the photo shoot. I just wanna give you some final impressions on what I think about this light now that I've actually used it. And there are a few things that I think you should be aware of. The first I mentioned earlier, and that is this thing can get extremely hot depending on the modeling lamp that you're using. Now, you are gonna wanna use a modeling lamp because it's just nearly impossible to create the pattern that you want with strobe because you're gonna have to take a photo every single time to tweak it. So you're gonna want a constant light on so that you can move this around and see exactly what you're doing. And if that constant light is a hot light or an incandescent bulb, this is gonna get extremely hot. It's gonna get so hot that you're gonna to need to use oven mitts or something to move it around. If you have an LED light, that's not a problem at all. In fact, I would really probably only recommend using this with an LED modeling lamp. The other issue that's not really a problem with this light in particular, but with these optical spots in general, is that as your model moves, you are going to have to tweak this light quite a bit. And because of that, I almost find that this light needs an assistant to monitor the entire time. So while you definitely can set this up on a light and use it 100% by yourself, it is going to make your life a whole lot easier to have somebody who is just helping you move the light around. Especially if you wanna mount this up high and kind of give those shadows, you know, the more realistic direction by being above their nose and kind of casting off to the side. In many cases, it's gonna be impossible for you to reach that and change it and then to get it perfect, and then by the time you get back to your camera, the model has moved. So using this light is a little trickier than say using a huge broad softbox that isn't you know, having to be tweaked perfectly. Another thing that I wasn't a huge fan of is the mounting for this gobo. I don't know if you can really see this, but it wedges right between these three little raised clips, and if it's not in there perfectly, it kind of acts a little wonky. I also wish that they had made the grip on this a little longer and maybe even a different style because once this is mounted, if you have to quickly make a tweak, I mean, all five of these look exactly the same. So sometimes I would think that I was moving a shutter, but instead I was moving the gobo. So I think this would be pretty easy to modify. You could probably make this a different color or put some tape on it. Do something so that you know visually and even if you're just touching it with your hands, which one is the gobo and which four are the leaf shutters. And finally, the last little tip that I could give you with this is the projections are always upside down and backwards. So if you have a light edge on the left side of your model, you would think that you would you know, change the left side of the curtain, but instead you're gonna have to reach for the right side and it really takes a little bit of getting used to. We were constantly pulling the leaf shutter from the wrong side or maybe we were pulling the bottom when we needed to pull the top. And so everything takes a little bit longer. You would think, oh, I got it perfectly dialed in, but then you wanna just change it just a little bit. You wanna make that sliver of light a little bit bigger. And suddenly now, instead of it just taking five seconds to fix, you know, it's taking a few minutes to get it perfect and you go beyond where you want it and now you have to like figure it all out. Meanwhile, your model is kind of standing there thinking like, well, what in the world are you guys doing? So I just wanna prepare you that using a optical spot like this is going to slow down your photo shoot considerably but that being said, I think it's really important for you to pre-visualize the type of image that you want. Take it slow, make sure your model knows that you're going for a very, very specific looking image and you know, kind of plan your photo shoot accordingly. Now, depending on your budget for photography, this might be a great deal or this may be a deal breaker. This thing is $499. So it is a pretty expensive light modifier. But in the world of multi-hundred dollar softboxes, especially if you're in the pro photo world like we are, 
this actually I feel like is pretty affordable and this is by far the most exciting light modifier I have ever used. I can think of so many instances, even if this isn't up front and center and this is the main kind of special effect, in many cases, I've been on set where I just wanna add a little bit of light to the eyes or I just wanna cut some nice hard light through the background. Um, if you're an architectural photographer, I know people like Mike Kelly, they sit there and wait for the sun to hit the wall perfectly to create that nice hard shadow and highlight across the scene. With the right lens, you could literally create this any time of the day and save you hours of waiting for that very specific shot to happen naturally. So I think this thing is totally worth $500, but in using this in our studio, the problem that I see is that I find myself actually wanting multiple ones. Maybe I want one just for the front of the model, but then I need a second one just for the background. And as you start looking at some of these images that Lindsay Adler has created, it's pretty apparent that an image like this or this is definitely using multiple optical spots to create them. So this might be a thousand dollar investment if you need two of them in your studio. And of course, if you're like me, I always want double of everything in case you're doing a really important photo shoot and something breaks or goes down, you have the backup. So I hope you guys enjoy this. I can't tell you how excited I really am about this light modifier. And because we split our time between different places in the United States, but also live in Puerto Rico, I think I'm gonna have to get one of these just for my studio down on the island. So um, if you enjoy this kind of content, make sure you subscribe to our channel below. It's a brand new year coming up. We wanna create some really interesting content and uh, you wanna make sure you follow our channel for that. If you wanna check out free written articles and wanna see what other photographers in the community are writing about, head over to fstoppers.com where we feature articles every single day. And if you wanna learn from some of the best photographers in the world, we've created some really in-depth, multi-hour, sometimes 10 and 20 hour tutorials with photographers who are incredible at their specific genre. Head over to fstoppers.com slash store where you can learn everything from landscape photography to headshots to architecture to swimwear. There's really something for everybody. And if you're the type of photographer who isn't sure what they wanna specialize in, check out the Well-Rounded Photographer. We've made one tutorial with eight different instructors so that you can get a little taste of everything that they do. And hopefully you can become a little more well-rounded in your own photography, or you can find that specialty that's gonna be perfect for you. You can check that tutorial out in the link below. I'm gonna get out of here. I hope you guys had a great Christmas and a happy new year. I can't wait to see what 2022 has in store. Hopefully all of us get out of the house and start shooting a little bit more photography. I know the last two years have been a little rough, but uh, I'm excited to see what this new year brings. Merry Christmas, happy new year.